hiking clothing, something to wear when you're hiking, what to wear when you're hiking. What a good question. I mean, you got to wear some pants. It's just the law. Uh, and then, you know, you wear a shirt if you want to, I guess. Um, but I like to wear shorts or pants and a shirt of some sort. The shirts I like to wear are going to be something that's lightweight, something that breathes really well, something that wicks moisture. It's either going to be made of something uh, synthetic like a polyester um, uh, nylon or spandex uh, blend, or you're going to have something like made out of merino wool, which is just a wool from a uh, certain sheep in a ge geographic area that produces really kind of like nice feeling wool. So. One feature that I really like and that I've come to like through my years of hiking is having some sort of hood. Just having a hood to put up, like let's say you're above tree line for a long time, it's just, it makes such a big difference when that sun is beating down on you. This hood will cover your ears, it'll cover the sides of your neck, it will just really keep that sun off of you. So that's what I like to use. Um, like I said, you can use, you know, whatever is good for you and uh, this is kind of what I like to use. For my bottom half, I am a shorts man. I am one of those people that wear shorts in 30 degree weather because I'm just like that. But uh, I like these Patagonia um, Nine Trails shirt, uh, shorts. They have basically this inside liner to them. It's gonna be like a uh, boxer brief liner and it just stays like super, super close to your skin and what I really want to get at is something just that provides um, relief from chafing. So chafing will pretty much, it'll stop you in your tracks. It's super, super painful. It's horrible. <laughs> and when it hits you, you're like, oh my God, I didn't think that this chafing would just, you know, end me. But it'll, it'll put you down for a day. It will hurt you big time. So something that's going to like protect you from chafing, just make sure whatever works for you, kind of use for that. Um, if your shorts don't have like an internal brief liner or whatever, just a pair of like, you know, sport brief liners is fine. Uh, this is an ex officio, um, I forget what they're called, but ex officio boxer brief uh, blah blah blahs that are made of synthetic and uh, there's a lot of different stuff out there. So check that out. If uh, you're gonna wear pants, um, you know, that's awesome. They're gonna provide more sun protection, a little bit more warmth, just more uh, protection from exposure in general, from bugs and, you know, whatever's out there, the boogeyman, I don't know. You know, other than pants, you know, if you're a girl or if you're a guy, you can wear a dress uh, if you want to. Um, I would imagine a dress would be pretty awesome, uh, very, very mobile and freeing. But you can also wear a hiking kilt. You can wear a hiking skirt. Um, I even wear like a rain skirt when it's raining for my rain gear for my bottom half. But there's a bunch of other stuff out there, just, you know, whatever, something to put on, something to make it legal for you to go outside and go hiking, right? <laughs> Um, so that'll be hiking clothing. Uh, I guess socks too. I wear darn tufts and there are also these really cool ninjinji socks with these little individual toe thingies. Uh, I like darn tufts because of the warranty they give. It's basically if they get a hole in them, you send them in, they give you a, a new pair. They're made of wool. They are comfortable for me. Um, just make sure to test out the sock that you're going to use, whatever it may be. You know, some people use little like cheap nylon dress socks from Walmart. Make sure you test that sock out. If it's going to be bad for your shoe uh, and just your body type down, you know, in your feet, like it's going to cause you a world of pain. So um, other than that, we have these uh, neoprene socks right here. These socks are pretty cool if you're hiking in the spring or fall, like this is all three season gear. So if you're hiking out there and it's been uh, 70 degrees and it was snowing you know the past week all that melted snow is going to get super cold and it's going to freeze your feet so those are nice if you're hiking in those conditions as well next we are going to sleeping clothing uh, for sleeping clothing we have some stuff that kind of overlaps with another category um, that we're going to talk about after sleeping clothing but sleeping clothing just is going to be you know something you're going to put on when you go to bed uh, it's going to be a reprieve from your stinky, disgusting hiking clothing that is just, it's disgusting. It's riddled with blood, sweat, boogers, who knows God what else. You just rip it off, throw it in the corner of your tent and get your lovely, clean sleeping clothes on. Now, sleeping clothing is, like I said, it's a reprieve. It's a mental up for sure. And it's going to keep you warm too. So it feels really good to put on a nice clean pair of clothes at the end of a day of hiking. It just, for your head, just being out there, being so dirty, being in the wild, not having your creature comforts, this right here does a lot for your mind. 
Now, you can use a couple different, you know, styles of fabric still. You can use polyester blends, you can use wool blends. Uh, I like polyester blends, personally. This here is going to be a wool blend. This one's going to be a poly blend. But whatever works for you um, is going to be uh, is going to be just fine. I try to keep my long underwear weights, like my bottoms, around, you know, four to six ounces. My tops around seven to eight ounces for three season use. I don't see, like, a point of bringing you know, a 10 ounce pair of long underwear bottoms on a summer trip. So kind of keep that in mind. You're gonna have your other um, items, you know, to form a system that can make you warmer if you need to. Now, sleeping items for clothing are also gonna be part of your sleep system. I want you to be aware of that. Now, when you're choosing sleeping clothing, be like, okay, is this gonna keep me warm in my bag that I have, in the pad that I have? Is this gonna, you know, work with all the other gear that I have? Or since I have a pad that doesn't, you know, weigh anything, it's like this thin, Am I gonna to have to sleep with you know, something a little bit warmer? Kind of keep that in mind. Then you're gonna have sleeping socks. Now, a lot of people carry like a thicker pair of wool socks or synthetic or whatever have you, sleeping socks just for sleeping in because their feet get cold. And I don't know what it is about me. My hands get freezing, my feet, I wear, liners to bed and I wear them just so my feet don't gunk up my sleeping bag like if I didn't care about that I wouldn't wear anything at all because for some reason my feet I don't know if they get cold and I just can't feel it and, or I just don't care or something but my hands bother me my feet don't so I bring really thin sleeping socks um, for a top you know any of these would work and uh, I just kind of choose something with a nice grid uh, pattern to it on the fabric. Uh, this one here is my, my favorite by far. It's comfy, but it's not the lightest. This one here is going to be my lightest. This is the Patagonia Thermal Weight Hoodie. Um, I like to have a hood on my sleeping wear as well, just like my daily wear, because if it gets chilly, I can throw the hood on. And 90% of the times, I'm actually sleeping with my hood on my, uh, my sleeping top. Now, this one here is going to be a little heavier, but a little warmer. It's a Patagonia R1. I highly, highly recommend a Patagonia R1. These are great, great tops. Uh, Melon's on a microgrid hoodie. They're uber popular right now. Everyone's got them, so they're, they're everywhere. And uh, this Montbell Thermorap UL Pro is really nice. It's got a hood on it, and it kind of starts delving into another category of clothing that this is, this is all going to cross-utilize into, and that is uh, mid-layers for hiking. Now let's say you get up at 4 a.m. because you like to be out by 5 and it's super cold. Like, okay, now I'm going to hike in, you know, this and I'm going to use it for my sleeping uh, attire as well. Now kind of keep in mind, like that's a practice that's, that's used by a lot of people. Now if you're going to sweat in this and make it all gunky and you know, yucky, that's just you just have to live with that for, you know, until you get to wash your clothes in a town or go get back to, to home from your trip or something. So kind of keep that in mind that you can cross utilize these layers into hiking clothing when you need to and also sleeping clothing. Now one thing that some people do is if it's, you know, if, if it's hot enough at nighttime or if they're just, you know, I don't know, they just hike, you know, 14 hours a day and then get to camp and go right to sleep, they utilize this as their thermal layer as well. So this will be like, you know, a mid layer and it can also be a sleep layer and it can be a thermal layer, um, like an insulative layer. Now, I don't really recommend that because if these get sweaty and wet and you need an insulative layer, then it's not there for you. But some people do that. It is an option out there. So I kind of keep these as mostly dedicated sleepwear, but I will hike with them on you know, occasion. If, if it's freaking cold outside and I need an extra layer, I'll throw one on. And then that's it. Um, so that's going to cover those things. Next, let's look at hats. So my personal favorite is going to be a trucker hat. It's just a nice kind of, you know, anything with a mesh back to it. I like the mesh back because I can turn it around and I can vent my head if I'm, you know, creating a lot of heat. And I love that aspect of it. The bill is also really rigid on these and just kind of it's hard for the wind. It's impossible for the wind <laughs> to misshape them. The wind can catch it and flip it off your head, yeah, but it's not going to do anything to the shape of the bill. So I like that because I can, you know, take the hat and I can point it certain directions. If the sun's coming at me over here, I can point it and point it down and this brim is going to really you know, the wind's not going to do anything to mess with it, and uh, I can get good sun protection. Now, if you want to use like a wide brimmed hat, you know, these are really popular too. Uh, what I don't like about them is one, when the wind uh, starts, uh, you know, really, really catching up, it bends the brims easily. Like these brims aren't as solid. So that's one thing I kind of don't like about them. Uh, the other thing I kind of don't like about them is. Well, this one's more heavier weight, so it just it doesn't vent heat as well on my head. So when I'm hiking with it, my head gets hot, 
And when my head gets hot, my body gets more hot because your head is kind of like the thermostat for your body. This one here is made of lighter material. It's nice, I like it more than that one, but it, it still has a super floppy brim to it. So the wind, you know, if I'm above tree line hiking for a day or most of the day, it's just doesn't even work. Um, we got uh, hats with these cool little uh, capes on the back here. And this one, you can stuff it back in and wear it reggy, or you can just let it hang and do its thing. Now, I don't really like these because they create for me this micro kind of climate, like environment. It makes my head just hotter. Just wearing that little cape, it kind of traps heat and stuff. And I don't know what it is. I've had, I've had actually another friend tell me the same thing before I even started wearing these. And I remember when I, when I started thinking about that when I was hiking with it, I was like, oh, she was, she was totally right, that it does create this little micro uh, climate of, of kind of heat around your head. So kind of keep that in mind too. Make sure to bring something like that out and test it before you, you know, go out on some big trip because you might, you might not like it. Uh, some pair of gloves here. So um, I just use a pair of Polar Tech gloves. These are a couple ounces. You know, gloves are always nice to have. I've worn them on super cold nights when I'm sleeping. I've you wore them to pick up a pot, you know, off of a, an alcohol stove or, a, you know, whatever, my titanium pot that gets pretty hot. And uh, yeah, other than that, we have stuff we like to put on our heads. So a beanie and a buff. Uh, beanie's just nice for your head. You know, anything really works. This is a fleece one. It weighs like a couple ounces and uh, it's just warm and uh, works for me. It's nice and lightweight. Make sure to bring something to cover your head though. Because like we were saying, the head is the thermostat for the body. If the head gets cold, the body gets colder. Head gets hot, body gets hotter. So thermoregulation on your head, you know, is an important um, feature of the clothing systems we're talking about for sure. Uh, this right here can do so much stuff. The buff, it can, you can wear it around your neck and have like a neck guard from the sun. You can put it on your head like a bandana. You can put it around your ears as like, you know, little earmuffs if um, you're hiking and you need to vent some heat, but it's still cold and your ears are cold. You can make little earmuffs out of this. You can dip it in a nice cool pond and put it around your arteries here and get some nice cool blood kind of flowing if you're really overheating out there. Uh, they have emergency first aid uses. They're, they're so versatile, they're just indispensable in my book. You should have a buff. Um, that's the one thing I'm gonna say that you should have <laughs> is a buff, because uh, they're awesome. I love buffs, so you can do so many things with them. All right, I think that is about it, and um, next time we will cover rain gear and insulative clothing. So I will see you then. Thanks for watching.